since the water had cycled for one week, it was safe for me to add some extra fish. This would help bring the gold tetras out to school and also help the pencil fish come to the front of the tank and feel confident. Even though Aqua Imports FedEx overnighted the fish, they still showed up without much color since it was pretty cold out that night. The gold tetras had absolutely no problem acclimating, however. I could say the same thing about my pencil fish which showed up in great shape. However, my five Amazonian Otosynclius, two of the five had already died on transport and uh, the three that were remaining, I found the last one unfortunately passed away on the side of my glass. So. I really like my Mist King, but unfortunately I didn't research which one to get properly and I should have got the one that has multiple nozzles. So this is part of my morning routine. One of the reasons that I'm able to add so many fish so quickly is because I'm constantly getting fresh distilled water cycled through the tank, so I've been making sure to take plenty of water back out so it doesn't overfill. Once my plants have grown in more and the water has cycled, I'll start to reduce how much misting time is allotted each day. Since the fish are still skittish and like to hang out on both the left and right caves, sometimes the middle of the tank is a little empty. That's why I've been making sure to throw as much food in there in the middle as possible so it draws them out. Usually starting with one or two and before you know it, they start to swarm. The gold tetras look especially cool from the top. Well, in my opinion anyway. There's a couple inhabitants of the aquarium portion of all this that you forget are even in here that I hardly ever see. That being my zebra pleco and my clown pleco. And trust me, I have spent hours <laughs> and hours looking. In order to try to draw them out, I put the algae wafers in the center of the tank as well, of course. There was, however, that one day where I caught a glimpse. I'm not really sure where these mushrooms came from, but I got paranoid that they'd start growing all over the place, so I started to get rid of them. Also, next to the mushrooms, I noticed that there was some weird other plant that I didn't plant starting to sprout up. And then I found yet another random plant sprouting in the background. And then there was these little random plants sprouting out of the moss over here. We busted out my trusty picture this plant app and made some discoveries. Since they didn't seem like they'd be too big of an issue, I decided to leave them for now. You can be sure that I'm going to be keeping a real good eye on them though. I put some dry rice underneath some of the almond leaves for the springtails to culture them and get them breeding. I noticed that they really, really like the aquatic filter foam uh, underneath the substrate. I guess it holds the perfect amount of moisture for them and it's got holes big enough for them to crawl in between. Go ahead and just tuck those back in. I also observed that my roly polies really love to eat my polka dot plant. And it would make sense that we would see the culprit on his getaway, which is also the only time that I've really seen any of the roly polies up in here since I put them in here. 
that same polka dot plant came as a trimming from this plant here which is where I drew the inspiration to use the aquatic foam as a backing in hopes to see some roots unfortunately none have come yet more mushrooms these ones I decided to leave as an experiment to see what would happen, which were also next to the baby tears, which was one of the only plants that I almost managed to completely kill. But it's making a good recovery. My Polynesian ivy I planted backwards, and I figured that out because it turned itself around. It also decided to cut through the leaf of the scarlet begonia, which was pretty gnar. The Boston Ivy didn't like where I planted it and ditched its leaves in order to grow out its stalk to get more light. The Didymostigma obtusum, if I'm saying that right, did the same thing. Ditched the leaves and grew the stalk. The Heartleaf Philodendron was doing particularly well. For the water feature, I have a trifecta consisting of American pillwort, fern moss, and broom fork moss, which all require different levels of moisture preferences. That way they'll sort it out and it'll make for some cool different shades and colors. And I particularly like the way the water sheds off of them. Temperature and humidity seem to be very consistent in here as well. I'm not sure if I'll be doing weekly updates, but I'll try to do at least one update once a month. I also have new build projects coming out. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you on the next update, or possibly the next build. Auf Wiedersehen!